wearing the blue, training out of Austin, Texas, and representing B Team Isaac Michelle. Most recently, the winner of the ADCC trials in Australia, qualifying for the World Championships. Isaac Michelle has had a pretty good 2022 year so far, but Chase. It could stand to get a lot better if he wins this match. Yeah, there's a ton on the line between the 10 grand from us, the 15 Tez coins, and the prestige of being the first ever WNX champ. Yeah, that's that's a big prize for Isaac Michelle. But standing in front of him is Kyle Chambers. And his opponent wearing the red, training out of Oceanside, California, and representing 10th Planet, Kyle Chambers. The 10th Planet Black Belt, Kyle Chambers, comes to the mat. Well aware of the opportunity that faces him here in this. The Tezos, who's number one, who's next finale? A colorful character with some colorful jujitsu as well. Yeah, very open game. One thing that Kyle said ahead of this match is that he's just grateful to show off his skills. He wants this to be a hallmark performance, something that he can talk about for years to come. So I expect some, some flash maneuvers and something that he really makes a statement with. Tail of the tape here, you can see Carl James, 30 years of age, six foot three to Isaac's 5'10. And the weight, all important, there is a 10 pound weight advantage in favor of Kyle Chambers, the 10th Planet representative. Now it's time to toss it over to our referee, Steve Hodger, to get things underway here in this no time limit match. Fight. Action is underway and a reminder that there are no judges in this match. This match will go as long as necessary. The only way to win is by a submission no matter how long it takes. An early guard pass there from Isaac Michel. I'm Howell Teague, Chase Smith, and we also brought in Kendall Rusin to call the actual for this action for this match as well. Kendall, early guard pass, what do you think so far? Man, we are right, firing, ready to go. I, I like the guard pass by Isaac, but more than that, I like his really insistence on controlling the position. You saw him go a little bit towards the front headlock and now towards the turtle, not allowing for any scramb scrambles where Kyle Chambers can really thrive. Um, great work from Kyle to get out of danger there. We knew this would be uh, this kind of game. Isaac hunting the back, and Kyle, known for his leg locks, but also been working extensively on his pressure passing should he take the top position at some point. Yeah, one I thing. think uh, one thing that's notable in this match is uh, that, that Isaac has said repeatedly he does not want this match to go uh, a long time because he literally arrived in the United States the day before yesterday. After traveling here from Australia, he says he's jet lagged, he said he's tired, he said he wants to get out of here early, whereas Kyle had his own re uh, response to that. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the, the worst uh, trips you can take in Australia as far as jet lag goes. And it's, but it's interesting, at the same time, like Isaac, this could, this could work out in Kyle's favor if Isaac is rushing for the finish, because Kyle looks very calm, uh, com like very, in comparison, looks very calm and uh, relaxed under pressure, and that's typically his style. So I see that if Isaac is really insisting on running his gas tank out, if he goes past the 10, 15 minute mark, then Kyle could really start to capitalize there. Yeah, Kyle Chambers said he does not get paid by the hour. He doesn't particularly want to be here for a very long <laughs> time either. I think if there's anybody who, um, who has proven his survival skills throughout the, se the, so the first season, uh, the, uh, the matches at Who's Next, the actual show itself, well, Kyle had a couple of long ones, including a a 90 minute plus match against Andrew Tackett, Chase. Yeah, and in the training when we visited 10th Planet Oceanside, Kyle was uh, very adamant that he feels right at home in the no time limit format. Trains for this, he knows that you can get into bad positions, but as long as you stay alive, you're definitely not out of the game. And 
maybe you'll find some cracks as the other guy he starts to get tired, make mistakes. I think Isaac spent so much time focusing on ADCC trials. You know, that's more of an explosive format. You've got time limit, you have overtime, time, and a heavy emphasis on wrestling. It's a pretty different game, potentially, from a uh, no time limit match. Yeah, it's true. And it's interesting where, you know, we have seen some guard passes. We've seen amazing positional control from Isaac. But at the same time, look, Kyle has not opened up any opportunities for submissions yet. He's not letting himself getting into too deep of waters or into really any serious danger. So it's a nice way to force your opponent opponent to run out a lot of their uh, a lot of their gas a lot has been made of Kyle Chambers leg lock game he won all of his matches throughout the show whose next show by leg lock including heel hooks and a knee bar and many people are talking about that as a major factor do we think that he has a particular advantage against Isaac Michelle when it comes to the leg locks Maybe executing them, but Isaac spends a ton of time with Craig Jones. You know, it's clearly very comfortable uh, surviving or training in those positions. Uh, must be at this point. And as of now, I think, I think Kyle, uh, excuse me, Kyle's playing a little bit of possum, right? Oh, if I say that, and now all of a sudden he explodes. <laughs> oh, now this is a significant moment indeed. Isaac, Michelle, the back control, the body triangle. This is one of his best finishing positions. This. Isaac Michel had 100% finishing rates at the ADCC trials in Australia. And this is one of the positions that he scored the most number of submissions from. This is a, an extremely effective position for him. Yeah, it's one of the things about the ADCC rule set that when you see competitors coming from the ADCC rule set, like Isaac having just won there, into who's number one or into any other um, places, we see, oh, I would say, a lot more finishes from the back and from back takes in any other position because there are not rules um, from, or I'm sorry, there are not points from turtle. It's very hard to score a guard pass in ADCC. You have to be completely flat on the mat. So when you get people from coming fresh off of ADCC wins, they're hunting from the back consistently. I would say more than even usual. So I'm not surprised to see him here. But again, Kyle Chambers coming from 10th Planet and coming from somewhere where they literally train from the, escaping from this position almost daily, which a lot of competitors do not do. Um, he looks, again, calm composed looks comfortable here no one in his corner is freaking out and he looks happy <laughs> you know we saw Kyle spend an extended period of time in his match with Andrew Tackett in exactly this position Tackett was on his back and was stuck to him like a tick but Kyle Chambers that was that was against 165 pound Andrew Tackett mm -hmm. whereas this is 188 pound Isaac Michelle a lot stronger and I'm not going to say in better jujitsu. That's that's all relative, all subjective. But I, this is not a guy that I would want to hang out in this position. In. Right. Yeah, I mean, we're almost we're getting close to an escape position here. Kyle is, and one thing that's interesting too is I know he was re he was taken out of competition for the a grip, little while. The oh. grip. Look at this. Could Isaac Michel be trying to set up a twister? He is. He's going for a twister. Uh, wow. With Eddie Bravo in his corner. Oh, the irony if he scored a twister against the 10th planet black belt. I mean, the leg position, it was solid. He managed to pass the leg over the head, but Kyle Chambers' reaction to that was, well, as you'd expect somebody from 10th planet, he knew what was coming. <laughs> Safe to say that Isaac's feeling confident out there, though. I mean, if he's, if he's going for unorthodox finishes like that, so that you don't typically see from him. Yeah. And again, chasing the back. Yeah, he's, he's feeling good out there. Yeah, again here, look at look at Kyle like, without the insistence to do any explosive escapes. Now I'm not saying that I would be comfortable doing that, but he looks happy, he looks okay. It's a conservative strategy. Yeah. He's conserving his energy for what could potentially be a marathon match. I mean you have no idea of how long this is gonna go. Yeah, we we don't and even if you look back to the J Rod and Giancarlo match, I mean J Rod was having his back taken for so long, and then, it, and then once he finally escaped, you see Eddie Bravo in the bottom left hand of the uh, of the screen, watching out for future twister attacks, I'm sure. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I'm sure he would have been pleased to see a move that he popularized in action, but uh, not pleased that it would have been against one of his, uh, one of his representatives. But Kyle Chambers, you know, we saw him in action on uh, Who's Next show, he, defeated Max Hansen. In Hold on, match. Yeah. this choke may be over the chin, but for a moment Isaac had a squeeze going there. Tough to see. Kyle's got angle. a hand in. It looks like he's got a hand over his own face defending that. 
we see a lot it's of... It's not a great position, but it's not an immediate submission threat, let's call it. But Kyle painful. Chambers scored a win, submission wins over Max Hansen, over Mike Rakshan, and over Andrew Tackett to qualify for this finale, whereas Isaac Michelle had wins over Josh Demas, over Adam Bradley, and Jansen Gomez to book his place in this finale match. It's quite a ride to the finals for Isaac. I mean, that is an incredible list of wins. Well, Adam and Jansen were both world-class black belts. Oh, no, this control sucks. <laughs> I sometimes like, end up there, and man, I'm so so <laughs> unhappy when that takes place. Yeah, we see Kyle, interestingly, just uh, continuing to cover his face over and over, trying to protect the neck. And we do see a lot of finishes, I was going to say, from ADCC uh, competitors or you know, trials winners of chokes over the face. It's very, very common. I would say more than in any other rule set, we see it a lot over the face, over the jaw. And you can get you can get blood from there on the, with the mandible choke if the chin is tucked going over the jaw. Or it can just be a nasty crank either way. A lot pain, of times it's pure pain, pure pain going to crush the jaw. Like your teeth feel like they're going to break. It's pretty intense. Um, you get the tap there too. So I think that that choke earlier was definitely the most significant submission attempt we've seen so far and not to be discounted. Today is not the day to forget your mouth guard, I think. You know, because you're <laughs> just racking up ride time of face chokes. That's yes. going to add up. Is seen that all of them tonight. Is that blood in his mouth or does he have a mouth guard? Yeah, that's a mouth guard, I think. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, wow, that face crank was deeper than I thought. <laughs> One Again, thing we notice as well in this match is that, you know, in this back control position that Chambers is defending his neck, hand fighting, hasn't done anything to address the body triangle yet. Kyle trying to turn into the body choke here, or body triangle, excuse me, <laughs> body choke. Sometimes, man, it yeah. feels like a body choke. <laughs> it has that effect, yes. <laughs> I've been squeezed there once or twice, and it's not pleasant. <laughs> yeah, again, I mean, we are, you know, getting close to the 10-minute mark, 8 minutes and 40 seconds into this match, and um, I'm wondering where the energy levels are at. You know, defending the back is no easy task, don't get me wrong. It's not something where he's, you know, not using any energy, but he is conserving Kyle quite a bit, keeping his hands over his face, keeping his elbows tucked in. Nothing has been too on just yet. And by contrast, Isaac continuing to attack and having to switch body triangles side to side and readjust his position with somebody who is bigger, stronger, um, and a very technically sound opponent can be pretty exhausting here. An interesting hand fighting um, thing oh, we're seeing here too. We Big see escape here. Chambers is out, and now for the first time in this match is in a position to stamp his authority on proceedings. It was interesting. He looked like he was going to turn and be mounted for a moment, but was able to come on top into the guard as, uh, instead. And Isaac looked happy to play guards here. So instead of insisting on top position, so I wonder what the strategy will be here from bottom from Isaac. Man, I'm having deja vu because I was there for that marathon match between. Kyle Chambers and Andrew Tackett in that closed door match that we had as part of the, the filming of the Who's Next Submission Fighter Challenge series. And it kind of looks a lot like that, you know, that, that Tackett enjoyed a long period in control and Ch Chambers got out and then you know, he got back straight back into the match. And we talk about Kyle's leg locks, but clearly Isaac is so comfortable in those positions. I mean, he was the one right now who just entered into single leg acts and was happy to play in those positions, and Kyle didn't even insist on staying there, right? And so I think that that's significant to note that Isaac is willing to go into Kyle's preferred positions at 10 minutes into the match with his with attacks of his own. I'm looking over at the corners. We saw, obviously, Eddie Bravo. He's also uh, joined by Gio Martinez, uh, one of his main representatives from the 10th Planet Network. And I love the way that the B-team guys come out to support their own. Of course, they're based here in Austin, Texas. You can see in the background right, right there, Nick Rodriguez, Ethan Gralinson, Damian Anson, Nikki Ryan, J-Rod. They're all right there to support Isaac Michelle through this match. And that counts for a lot. 100%, especially after that grueling travel, you want to have the squad behind you, not be alone out there. And you have to think now, as we enter past 10 minutes, I mean, Isaac's sweating a lot, and Kyle has been pretty conservative. This may start to be a real factor if we go, let's say, 10 more minutes, 20 more minutes. Kyle also back looks... Step, back step from the top half guard. This is good option for Isaac to go for a leg attack here. 
Look at the difference in height here. I think there's a five inch difference in height. And when you look at the leg attacks there, it's hard for, once Isaac gets a lock on the leg, it's hard for him to even reach his arm back all the way to the heel. That definitely makes a big difference in these attacks. A it real change in strategy from Michelle. Mm. I love the way he changed, uh, attacked both legs on that transition as well. He switched from one to the other, thought about coming up then, going for an over-under style pass. I think there was a strategy shift with Kyle too. We saw like when Isaac came up, he was much less happy with the guard pass attempts and very insistent on and, and the seated guard rather than a supine guard where he was laying down before. Um, and I think now he's he's starting to turn up pace. Maybe this was the game plan, you know, make it past the 10 minutes and then turn it up. I'm wondering as well, you mentioned the, the slipperiness as a factor. And the fact that Chambers is wearing spats, whether later into the match, if that could work in his favor is as we said you know he's a leg lock specialist it's been it's been positioned by multiple analysts that you know a leg lock is a potential route to victory for chambers and i'm wondering as we get deeper and as it gets more slippy whether those spats will help him secure that hold that he needs to get the finish yeah it's definitely a factor sometimes it's something to think about the but it's just so funny because I think the thing, the spats he has on in particular look very slippery to me. Oh, <laughs> wow. look at that. Big back rolling attack. Back, attack here, back attack here from Isaac. And he is on. He has that left hook in. And Two the hooks. right foot is in as well. That was beautiful. Um, Shell is very dynamic when he wants to be. You know, I think he's realized that he's 12 minutes plus into this match that he knows he needs to pace himself. And we're all trying to pace ourselves here. But he's... Uh, He's using those bursts of energy when appropriate. Yeah, that was beautiful timing where he saw that entry. A little hand over the mouth action here. Yeah, I mean, if Kyle wants to put his hands on his cheeks, <laughs> you got to kind of attack what's left. Yeah, look for the nose, the neck is closed, <laughs> look for the nose and the mouth. Start working your, your head to the side. Every time he, he gives you that pass, when he reaches over, get your head on the mat. 15 minutes in. Yeah, can you believe that we're 15 minutes into this match, thereabouts, you know, the, the, the clock has started just a little after the, uh, the official start. And uh, this is the regulation length of a, of, a, of a standard who's number one match, and things are only just getting going here. Yeah, which I think goes to show that both athletes have the no time limit pacing in mind. Uh, we've seen some bursts of energy, but they are anticipating this going for the long haul. You see Isaac, maybe I'm another twister attack? I mean, this is the perfect position. Banana splits. Oh, no, that looks painful. But Kyle's incredibly flexible, actually. Yeah, we saw him upside down just yeah. a second ago. I like the way that Kyle Chambers was able to address that by kind of uh, removing the hook. He could potentially flip this position. He's able could look to get for his a hips to the, yeah, able to get his hips to the floor. Yeah, you call the candle. And Michelle cleared the knee line because yeah. that cough crush was a real threat there for a second. Yeah, that's the typical. I mean, if you're stuck in that position and someone is uh, anchoring down, so you're not able to get the push to open up the exposure to the back, then the calf opens up. But Isaac was able to turn his knee and, and stay safe here. Now coming up on top with some big pressure too. You hear Gio in the corner there calling for Kyle to flow more. And I, I was just thinking as I watched that uh, attempt at guard retention that Kyle was straining a bit more than we had seen. And then he listened to Gio, ended up getting passed, but he feels safer here, right? And if you're going for an infinite amount of time, you don't want to gas. We see the hands on the face defense once again from psych control, though, or an almost pass, which is an interesting, interesting attempt, I guess, avoiding uh, arm triangles, avoiding any seatbelt grips to attack the back. Very difficult to dig under hooks from here. And I definitely understand Isaac's uh, response here, kind of just smashing the face down. If the face is being covered up and you can't open under hooks, you can't open up head control, then you just, you know, what's left other than the second top of the head? <laughs> You've got to tire them out sometime, and maybe it comes from emotional damage first. <laughs> you know, just brutalize them a bit from top, and then they'll begin to open up. Oftentimes does come from emotional damage first, I would say. <laughs> you know, we talked a lot about how Kyle had 
those really long matches. You know, his match against uh, against Mike Rakshan was over half an hour. His match against Andrew Tackett was over an hour and a half. But Isaac Michel's longest match throughout the, the season of Who's Next was 42 minutes against Adam Bradley. So he knows what it's like to go against a, a let's say, a conservative. Oh, Cal oh Cal Cal good here. bang entry oh, from heel. Chambers. Looks like he's lost the knee line here, but his legs are so long he can still keep it tight. Not completely out of danger, though, is Michelle. See how Chambers follows this up. Uh, yep, Michelle oh. disengages. Go back to the Chambers was like a viper there. Just uh, from nowhere, struck with a leg attack. Fight. But Michelle knows what it's like to go against a conservative opponent who, who is maybe playing a strategy that relies on kind of tiring him out. That Michelle went. 42 minutes against Adam Bradley. So he knows what it's like to be in those long, long matches. It is hard, I would say, to, you know, from Isaac's perspective, getting to multiple dominant positions and not being able to finish is really mentally tough because Oh wow, interesting foot sweep come up here from Kyle. Yeah, Kyle really turning at the pace. A little more urgency in every or each of his attacks so far. Yeah, I'd say it looks like he's eager to play top position if he can have the chance, the opportunity to. But it is tough here for Isaac Fight. because if you're in a match with somebody who you've gone to multiple uh, dominant positions and not been able to finish, it's not of course you still want to go for the finish, but it's a little demotivating, right? When you're like thinking about getting to the mount again, because it's like, wow, okay, I'm gonna yeah, have like, to do- Yeah, it's like, what do I do to put this guy away? Yeah, like I'm more tired now than I was before, and now I have to do it again, but do it better and finish. Like, because there's no limit. It's one, it's different than if there's a time, because then you're like, oh, okay, well, maybe I can get to dominant position, hang on, time's gonna run out, I've been winning, you know, this kind of strategy stuff going on in the back of the athlete's head. But if that doesn't exist, then it it's, can be really, really frustrating, a little demotivating, like I said, and just kind of looking for new answers while sticking to what's supposed to be your A game. Nice. We see Isaac trying to slither into the mount here. Probably trying to open up the elbows with his left hand, but again, Kyle with that same defense of kind of bringing his hands towards his face, keeping his elbows tight. It's a seems, tough shell to try, and cr to try and crack, isn't it? It is. It seems like because of the time limit, again, he's not so worried about the pass, and it's more about keeping his elbows in to kind of run the clock down, tire out Isaac a little bit, stay safe from submissions, um, and then eventually, you know, get to some escape that's kind of been the pattern of this match so far again hands on the face Jamers has definitely been counter-attacking when yes. he feels that moment that opportunity he he lights up he gets after it but yeah it's, it's a very precarious situation for Isaac because if you continue pushing the pace when somebody is so closed like this then you open yourself up for escapes and you open yourself up for explosiveness which is what Kyle's been capitalizing on but if you do nothing, you can't move forward, right? Because now it's kind of a stalemate. So um, every athlete kind of approaches that a little bit differently. And I think what we're seeing from Isaac now versus the beginning of the match may be a little bit more of a patient approach to these finishes. Now we see Isaac. I thought maybe he would go for an arm there instead of the neck. But I think Chambers was aware of that. And yeah, even look. moving into this inferior position, it's still not uh, not a terrible place to hang out in a match this long and uh, you know play the defensive game. It's not easy for Isaac to open anything up from here. Yeah, Isaac looked like he wanted to go for the arm, but he couldn't free his left leg from under the back of Kyle, so he wasn't able to, to get his leg out to bring it across the face. And if you insist on that position from there and you just keep trying to yank your leg out, that's when your partner will turn up and come to the top position, which I believe is what happened earlier when Kyle escaped and came up on top in close guard. So instead opted to go to the mount, and now we see you know, a lot of heavy pressure here from this like side mount back smash <laughs> position. Um, and Isaac looking up, <laughs> kind of perplexed on how to how to crack this, how to open him up. Yeah, you have to think a key to victory might be getting 
uh, a way to isolate the arms of Kyle Chamber, get those elbows off the mat, start looking for head and arm chokes. I mean, Kyle's doing the exact thing he should to prevent that, but he's been so comfortable and effective at escaping the back that he seems to feel like he can do that all night, right? So I, I think a strategy change for Isaac might be to start focusing a bit more on the arms. You see, he's trying, but uh, right now, Kyle's doing a great job of maintaining his defensive shell. Wow, what that transition <laughs> from Shell, so good. And the beautiful back maintenance there. And even this deep into the match, he can accelerate when necessary. It was like he was going to give up the position. He said, no, wait, just kidding. I'm going to take, <laughs> take that right back. <laughs> I don't want to have to take your back again. <laughs> kind, of a, kind of a false scramble, right? Like, well, I'm going to mm -hmm. open up. Nope, and then jump on in a submission. Yeah. I, I do, I am so curious to know how Isaac is feeling now after, you know, we're getting close to 23 minutes into this match, just having traveled so long, like a day and a half ago. It's, if you haven't done it before, man, getting close to 25 minutes, that is really intense. He probably did something to, to blow out his system, you know, yesterday or this morning, that's what I would imagine. Yeah, they say the best thing to do after a long and arduous journey and that flight from Australia is uh, that's pretty taxing. The best thing to do is just sweat it out as soon as you get, as soon as you land your destination, as soon as you can, get a good workout, sweat it out and try and proceed from there. Oh, look at this, the smother. Oh, you see Michelle, hand over the mouth, under the chin, trying to expose the neck. It's getting gnarly now. Yeah, if he can be aggressive enough on the face to force Kyle to remove his hands, then he can open up the space between the chin and the chest, try to go under that way. But Kyle looking like he's just happy to kind of grit it out and keep his hands in place. I do see Isaac trying to elevate that arm above the head. It looks like he he almost had that arm armbar attempt twice now, and the second time was closer than the first, so he may seem to be a little tighter on the third possibly transitioning to rear triangles as well. Yeah, things started off pretty gentlemanly, but you can see Isaac getting much more aggressive with the hand fighting, not just pawing at the hands, but sort of pawing generally at the face, right? Trying desperately to get Kyle to open up a little bit, and there he's chasing the arm again. Yeah, I think he has to, right? I, I, 100%. Yeah, absolutely, That's that's gotta be the way to go. I would say even more aggressive. I'm surprised, I, man, if I were him. <laughs> I'd be so frustrated at this point, like, let's go, man. See if, like, people start swinging from the back. <laughs> Forearms to the nose, like. Because now we're talking about 25 minutes. Like Kyle said, they don't get paid by the hour, so. I'm going to get that finish in. Keep it over your shoulder. I am hearing a little more urgency creeping into the voice of Kyle's corner. They can see him maybe starting to fade, being a little less effective at defending the hands immediately, right? Yeah, and I would say then, even from the, the perspective of Kyle's corner, Isaac's not fading, <laughs> you know? And I think maybe that's what we were hope, they were hoping for, they were thinking, I mean, who knows? But if I were Kyle, I'd be like, man, this guy is supposed to be tired and he is still coming at me 100%, so. I guess it's time. <laughs> Almost free from the back to chest connection here. Now I was wondering what happened if Isaac was able to flatten Kyle out belly down. Belly down. You're not seeing it here. Kyle's doing everything he can to prevent that, but that would be another exchange that Here's might change the dynamic. Yeah, it could. We're close. Yeah, I think now what you're saying, Chase, exactly. He, his hips, his pressure with his hips are perfect because it forces the partner, or Kyle, to be flat, whether he's on his stomach or his back. Now we see an underhook here from Isaac for the first time. So hard to get underhooks on an opponent playing like this. I see a little more. Uh, you can you can see the sort of the, the, the arduousness of these positions kind of showing a little bit more now on Kyle's face. Whereas before he was very calm in the in these positions, whereas before he was somewhat relaxed under pressure, his face now tells a different story. You know, we're, we're, we're nearing the 30 minute mark and he doesn't look as comfortable as he was before. Yeah, and this is to making him defend two different kind of actions, right? Defending the hips being flattened out and the face. He's more comfortable here where his hips are sort of 
relatively inactive, unless he really wants to get out of the position. But I like what I was seeing from Isaac there. I think he may look to go back to the belly down when he can. I just want to mention the fact that this is the first time this crossed my mind. Gordon and Pedro are up next, and how odd would it be to be warming up for a match? You have no idea when it's going to end. Like, you can't really do a normal warm-up because you have no idea when you're going to start. I wonder what they're doing back there. It just crossed my mind. <laughs> right, watching intently, yeah. Yeah, exactly. What it's going to take you for Isaac to maybe solidify something. Mm -hmm. be hard to zone in, right? It'd be hard to, like, get in the zone when you're paying so close attention to this match. Especially when there have been so many points where it looked like there was a near submission about to happen. So you kind of like a hurry up and wait kind of vibe. Now we see an arm ice, another arm isolation from Isaac. So creeping that right leg up. Could be looking for a triangle here. Oh, that was pretty good. But Chambers is out and immediately looking to suck up the legs for an entanglement. But up and out. Back to their feet. Man, Michelle is aggressive. He's not letting up on the pressure here. No, and the moment Kyle looked like he wanted to wrestle, Isaac was more than happy to oblige, right? <laughs> Pulled on the head. Kyle sat down very quickly there. Wow, big pass straight to the upper body connection. Almost looked like he was going to spin to the back, and Kyle put his back to the mat. I wonder but if one, Go ahead, Kyle. Once again, it's that same story, isn't it? The long periods of positional dominance from Isaac Michel, and then uh, just the, the slightest opening and a, a flash submission attempt from Kyle Chambers and then back into this repeat over and over. This is, this is the first time that we've seen Kyle defend the mount. Like, he, he wasn't grabbing his foot before. There's a little, I, I mean, I don't, I can't imagine he would want to go through that same exact series again, right? No. I mean, how many times can you just hang out in those yeah. positions, right? It's got a, it's got a wear on you. It's also interesting to know that the three, like those are three different attacks that Isaac went from the back to the arm, and all three of them ended in the escape that, that gave the flurry. So now, I like that Isaac is staying in north-south and, and kind of looking for some openings from here rather than trying to force the back again, because that has, you know, been a frustrating position for him to finish three times in a row. So could attack Kimura on the top side arm here, could look for guillotines if there's a turtle. Yeah, the Kimura grip was there briefly, but okay, stop. even with that long sleeve rash guard and the friction that it offers, I think the sweat's such a factor here. Fight. Isaac does such a good job keeping his shins parallel to the person's body so that he can follow them no matter where they go once they're pinned. And so we really see him being able to attack the mount, side control, back, front headlocks, all kind of interchangeably um, because he keeps that upper body connection, whether it's on the chest or the back or the side. But now big flying <laughs> attack here from Isaac, almost jumping through. I would say that's the riskiest attack we've seen from Isaac Michel so far. Because all of his previous attacks have come from positions that he's positionally very, very dominant. But that was a... Uh, that was a beautiful guard pass once again. Yeah, it looked like Kyle wanted to go in almost like, the first he looked at a normal plata, then it was looking almost like a knee oh, bar. Oh, now he's isolating that arm a little bit. Yeah, if we can get, if, if Isaac can detach the elbows from the rib cage, he's gonna be in pretty good shape. Anytime your opponent's elbows are really close to your rib cage like that, it's they have so much power and they're very hard to attack. Even looking for the Nogi Ezekiel here, it's not the best angle, but he's just working anything he possibly can. And he said this in pretty much all of his interviews yesterday, in the press conference, he said, you know, I'm just gonna throw up as many submission attempts as I can in the hope of finishing this as soon as possible. This True would, to his word, that's what he's doing. Yeah, absolutely. This would probably be the best look at the arm that we've seen so far. If he can get a nice bite, and he does have a nice bite, he's gonna sit over here on the arm. Beautiful transition to S-mount and then isolation of this top arm here, rather than going to the back, but now <laughs> loses the arm right to the back again, of course, as they say. I mean, I actually looked over and in the background, all the B-team guys, they suddenly, they sat forward, forward, and at the, as the arm bar, and then he moved to the back and they all went, oh! <laughs> <laughs> the commentator's curse. Sorry, Isaac. <laughs> Part of me thinks that Isaac might start looking to force Kyle into more open positions and make him work a little harder. Right now, we've seen Kyle possum his way out of a lot of different positions. We've seen the strain creep in at 30, you know, over 30 minutes, mm -hmm. but I, I'm maybe passing from the outside and forcing some scrambles. I don't know, changing it up because Kyle has proven many times over at this point that he can get out of this. He's a tough nut to crack. 
here's a, uh, a little look at that B team. Left to right, Nick Rodriguez, Ethan Kralinson, Damian Anson, and Nicky Ryan. And oh, 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 they see themselves on the screen, so they're like, no, 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 be serious now. <laughs> 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 yeah, he's, he's even changing his face with his hand. <laughs> Going to serious mode. Coach mode. Very professional. Although I don't know how professional you can look with the Mexican karate shirt on, so we just buy him and everything. Oh, for a moment I saw a glimmer of an arm under the chin. Now you have to wonder, when Kyle thinks he's going to find an opening, right? We see him look at the legs briefly. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that looks horrible. That's over the face yeah. as well. Hard to see from this angle, but that was like just straight forearm over the face right there. I think he needs to. I think he needs to get more, to, to crack something like this, yeah. to someone like this, he's going to need to get more aggressive. He's going to have to go forearm over the face. Now we see a little bit more pressure here. He's going to have to go over the nose even. That's you know? exactly what Isaac had to do against Adam Bradley. I mean, 42 minutes into that match, uh, in the end, Isaac, who's one of the nicest guys you'll meet, by the way, very soft-spoken, very relaxed, very easygoing. He had to get mean in that match because Adam Bradley was so tough, so durable. The only way that he could crack at that was to just be mean. Yeah. A lot of people do require that, especially at this level, especially when there's a lot on the line. Um, you, you have to be mean. They're not going to give up. I mean, and sometimes it ends badly. I mean, unfortunately, we saw that earlier with Tristan, for example. I mean, Tristan is a super tough guy, wasn't tapping to submissions over and over, and, uh, and you know, ended in, a, in an injury, unfortunately. It's like, that's the name of the game. Now we see some elbow rib cage separation here on that top side arm again. Looks like Isaac's looking to potentially shift it to an arm triangle if he can keep the head involved. See his right hand. There we go. There it is, yeah. But that that right hand of uh, Chambers keeping everything nice and separated. Oh, there you go. See, Chambers throws up the legs. Yeah, looking for a leg entry. Kyle Chambers bringing his legs all the way over back into an open guard. Kyle, not conceding that pass quite as quickly as before now. Actually being a little more active with his guard and preventing the pass uh, rather than simply accepting it. It's interesting to me that he's willing to pull into this quarter guard position. Right? He's Back done that a couple times. from Michelle from that top half guard, knee slice position. Yeah, and it's very dangerous for that reason, right? Because if Isaac steps back over and locks his legs in an, uh, figure four, or steps back over, then he has passing opportunities. That is one of the, that's the, that's the kind of position, choose your own adventure. You've got such good options from mm -hmm. there. But look, at, now we're getting a good look. Really, for the, not for the first time, we're getting a look at that flexibility once again of Kyle Chambers. I mean, he can put his legs behind his head, both legs behind <laughs> his head from that position. He does, it does sometimes serve as a disadvantage occasionally, and I know because I'm, I'm the same way, I'm very flexible. It's like sometimes you get so confident in your flexibility that you just, it feels like, well, I can escape from anywhere. I can do anything. I can backflip if I want to. <laughs> and then someone has great positional control, and you're like, oh. Well, not now. <laughs> we saw him try to like reach his leg over and underhook with his arm, but the position of Isaac was so, so tight that it didn't really do him much good. Oh, so but no now Ezekiel. no Ezekiel. Ezekiel from top. You can hear the crowd again excited by that, but that's a hard move to hit, right? It is, especially with an opponent playing like this with the hands in tight. It's just how are you going to get your the you know the crest? What do you call it, the ridge? The crest of your hand? The, the ridge of your hand side in <laughs> into the person's uh, trachea? It's going to be really difficult to do that with a with a defense like Kyle's. Chase, you did an episode of Fix My Game, your iconic jujitsu series with Craig Jones, and you felt the no He was yeah. kind enough to show me that in real time, <laughs> and it wasn't the ridge; it was it was a fist actually that, <laughs> that, that he used, but it worked. It's a, it is an effective technique, right? It worked. See the hand fight from Chambers, trying to peek his head out to the side. You see Kyle also nodding to his corner, you know, he doesn't look too worried here. He's like listening to direction and whenever we see someone communicating with their with their corner like that, we know they're usually pretty zoned in. Big hit pressure here from Isaac. Nice recovery there from Chambers. 
I think this this match so far, you know, we're way past the half an hour mark now, is getting really deep into this match. This is uh, for the competitors. This is an exercise. Kendall, I think you could speak to this best. It's an exercise in um, in mental endurance as much as physical, right? The ability to stay focused, to stay present in a match this long while fighting through fatigue, while fighting through the physical discomfort, right? Yeah, I would say anyone who's coming here as an elite level grappler is in great shape, right? We know they're training hard, they're doing long rounds, they're getting ready for something like this. So it's not a question of whether they're conditioned or not. And even the jet lag, it's like, it, you know, it's it's really relevant, can play, it can play its part. But more than anything, it does become the mental battle here where opponents are looking at each other wondering who's going to break. You know, and that is a really precarious position to be in because if you want to step your foot on the gas to ramp things up, you're like, okay, well, if I do this, is it? am I gonna win? Because if not, I'm gonna be exhausted and then maybe I'm gonna break instead of them, right? And so you, you get into these positions where whoever has weaponized their mind um, is gonna be, and that's a very intentional thing, but whoever has done that is gonna be in much better shape. And Stop. I would say Isaac is looking like he's done that. Don't forget that if you scan the QR code that you can see on the screen right now, you can actually claim a free NFT. Tezos, who's next? Long fungible token. Go ahead and grab yours now. Isaac's still looking pretty fresh and smooth out there. Beautiful passing attempt here. And that's why I say I think that he is the one in the match who's really weaponized his mindset, right? Because he, even though he's gone to so many dominant positions and not been able to finish, he has not slowed down one time. He, he looks sharper than ever. Actually, as the match goes on, I would say he looks sharper and sharper. I kind of feel more. like he's got his foot on the gas pedal right now. Yes, he does. He does. Yeah, wow, beautiful step through to the mount. And I think he's getting closer to a finish little by little. And I think it's because of what you said, Howell. He is kind of turning up the heat. He's getting a little bit more aggressive. I, in my opinion, we are going to have to see more of it to get the finish it here. It makes me wonder if he can feel something that we can't see, mm. you know? Because I'm sure that Chambers is a big individual, you know? He, he weighed in at uh, 198 pounds. He's six foot three. He's a big dude, and I'm sure he's very physically strong. And I'm, I'm wondering how he feels now at this stage in the match compared to as he did in the earlier stage of the match. And once again, we see that Nogi Ezekiel kind of at work a little bit there, but Isaac, Maybe he smelled some blood in the water. Maybe that's why he's putting on the pressure now. Maybe he feels like, oh, you know, this guy's not as strong as he was earlier. It's possible. Just a theory. It's possible. Yeah, just the confidence being built after positionally dominating for so long. It takes a, again, when you're in this position as an athlete, you have to make a decision. Are you going to let stepping on the gas pedal freak you out because you're worried about getting tired? Or are you going to let it excite you because every time you do it, you capitalize? I'm really interested to see the way that Isaac, that he rides those sort of mount escapes, that he, he rides them and he's just setting up the body triangle, but then ready to drop straight back into the mount again. You can see the way right here, that the way that Chambers is turned onto his side, and Isaac isn't simply with both feet on the floor, he's actively, right here, you can see it, he's actively setting up the body triangle from top. A really nice detail that I've seen in again and again, and technically, I'm quite excited to try that when I get into the gym. Yeah, it's definitely something that a lot of athletes do to avoid getting put back in quarter guard. It's the most common escape we see from the mount. And we saw him do two things. One, he sets up the body triangle really nicely. And the other thing that he does, he's very slick when Kyle starts to turn onto his side. If he doesn't have the body triangle locked, he moves to S mount almost before, like it, he moves before it's time, right? So he shoots his leg up onto the mat into S mount and immediately starts securing the back rather than the mount. So something really excellent that he does, which is why, you know, we, We've seen him basically on the back of the mount for the, ma the vast majority of this matchup. There's probably only a couple minutes of combined time where he was not on the back of the mount. And it's pretty impressive on a competitor like Kyle Chambers. Yeah, this body triangle, a real theme we've seen in action in 
most wow, most matches this evening, I would actually say. What's the longest match you ever competed in, Kendall? I think I did some crazy things with the colored belts where it was like, I don't know, 30 plus minutes and stuff like that. But since black belt, I think 20, yeah, 20 minutes. Although my, my training for ADCC had me prepping for 40 minutes, so things have been a little more intense. <laughs> I really do think, though, for, for most competitors, it comes down to weaponizing your mind at that point because this match could look any kind of way in the first five to ten minutes, but the, the more the time runs down, or runs up, I guess I should say, the, uh, the more dominant Isaac looks. We, we've seen Isaac in the gym a lot. You know, we're very fortunate to be based here in Austin, Texas, as is the B team, so we get to go in and, and see the training there firsthand pretty often. But Chase, you were actually in 10th Planet Oceanside. You got to go and see Kyle preparing for this match with Isaac. Did you notice anything specific in Kyle's training for this? Uh, well, they weren't running no time limit session. Uh, oh, they session. weren't? No, they ran just like eight minute rounds, I want to say. But Kyle did put himself in some bad positions. He was working out on his escapes and he was very adamant uh, in his interview about how at other sessions they were exploring the no time limit, the 30 minute rounds, pushing himself with his cardio. But it wouldn't shock me, it, let's say uh, somehow some crazy submission happens and Kyle comes out of this on top, that he would say that this is all kind of part of the plan, right. was, was to just take this as deep as he could. rope -a dope it's the grappling exactly. equivalent of rope -a dope right? And uh, he definitely seemed confident that he would win uh, should this go into deep, deep water. That was his, his idea, I think. Well, I mean, at what point do you class it as deep, deep water? I, I think we're know, there. I, I feel like <laughs> but there. How many minutes? 45 <laughs> minutes. It's pretty deep. Yeah, yeah 45. We'll hit the Mariana scene, you know, at two hours. <laughs> I mean, how deep can you go? Yes. <laughs> we're going to find out. Yeah, I mean, for, I mean when you, for anyone listening or watching, get, I don't think the vast majority of people have ever rolled straight for 45 minutes. Like I think most people would probably just physically like wilt after yeah, a certain period. It's a as pretty well, short right? list. Like yeah. even competitors, like high level competitors, like how many people are doing 45 minutes? It's just not practical. Oh, we see Isaac right. maybe looking at a Kimura. I can't really see. I think so. He's got the, the kind of the head trapped between the thighs. That's a strong attack position for Michelle. The okay. grip doesn't seem to be too set though. Look at Kyle high. looking like limp, like he's yeah. just laying down. And I wonder what the strategy is here, because typically when we're defending this position, you come up into the turtle, try to roll through, come up to your knees, but he prefer is preferring to stay completely flat. But again, now look at Isaac's left knee staying tight to the body, which allows him to stay inside control, move to the back. So that's what we were talking about earlier with keeping the shin parallel to the, to the spine and keeping the leg glued in. And so even though he does lose the arm, he still has great control. Now might be on the other arm. He might be able to lock up a Kimura on this side. He does an excellent job, too, keeping his chest really tight to the tricep. And then when the tricep moves, pinning it back down to the side. So constantly taking up space. Rather than opting to move into the back, because there is space now. Isaac could have put his right hook in. He just chose to stay on the side, but now switching off to the back. Oh, you can see they're getting pretty slippery <laughs> out there. The kicking escape <laughs> there from, from Kyle. And Steve is going to bring them back into the center, reset his open guard position. I think at this point, the passing scenarios come as a bit of a relief to Isaac. It's not as grueling, probably, as just trying to peel up an elbow find an opening for yeah. the choke. At least he has a little bit of fun working his passing. <laughs> and now we're here again in this puzzle that is Kyle Chambers. Like, you know what we haven't seen? Deficient positions, yeah. Haven't seen a single buggy choke attempt. 
No. Kyle Chambers built for it, but... I know, right? Not He's a lot of time in side legs. control, though, to be honest. True. Not that that's the only place you can hit it. We see it everywhere these days, but... Jay tried it from half guard earlier yeah. on John Carlo. He hit it from close guard in a tournament not too long ago. I think it was mm. finished as sub only in a super fight. He, uh, he was able to win via a buggy choke from pretty much a close guard setup, but I had never seen it before. I didn't even think it was possible, and he still hit that, the, hit that submission. He's going to have a buggy choke instructional sometime soon. <laughs> I mean, buggy choke is all the rage right now. I, I've i lost count of the amount of times that uh, I have to defend that every time I go to the gym. Everybody's throwing them up nowadays. Shout out to Rene Sozo. Got a buggy choke DVD out there. That's pretty sick. <laughs> go check it out. Buggy WNX choke the world. alumni. Yeah. <laughs> well, and tonight we've seen, uh, we've seen a couple attempts, and every single time people are standing straight up. So that's an interesting thing to note, too, for those of you guys uh, victims to buggy chokes at home. We're seeing, Posture. Posture yeah, is key. Posture up. Posturing up right away. Saw Giancarlo doing that. Uh, we saw Tackett doing that as well. Back into another dominant mount position here. We're over the 45 minute mark now. Hands on the face again from Chambers. Let me hear Gio in his corner. Don't give him anything, keep her elbows in. Elbows in tight, don't give him anything. So it definitely was the strategy coming in these dominant positions. And you can hear Isaac's corner of the B team guys saying to stay persistent about the elbow. So that is the key here. We've seen that time and time again, opening the elbow, keeping that elbow separated from the ribs, which he's doing now with his right hand. And this opens up the arm attacks that we've seen multiple times. But what he also tried to do earlier was switch off to the arm triangle to connect the arm and the head together. But each time he's transitioning through those attacks, Kyle opts to give up his back rather than the submission, right? Which, to be fair, is a, is a fair strategy, right? To not get submitted, but it puts you in an even worse position on the back. Right in front of the 10th planet corner here. Isaac Michelle aggressively working the face of Kyle Chambers in an attempt to open something up. And fighting right in front of Gio Martinez, whose silhouette you can see in the bottom right of the screen. Another arm attack here from Isaac, but this time he is fully locked on. He has his legs locked in a triangle here. Oh, this is this is tight. Now this is a, an unusual upside down triangle from the back, but this is a legitimate choking technique. This is a fight ending position. Now it's not the easiest position to get the finish, but you have to think when they're fatigued like they are now, can Kyle Chambers hold on in this position? Or Isaac Michelle, will his legs burn out? Will he be unable to get the squeeze? That definitely can happen. It's sitting on a triangle after 50 minutes of competition can be hard to hold that position. Yeah, there are no rounds, there are no water breaks. You have to think they're both extremely depleted. The pressure, you can see the pressure on uh, just, just by looking at Chambers' face. Yeah, this is better now, this transition that he's moved to. There's a much better finishing position here. He can also attack both of the arms. Can attack this free arm here on the top side. But this is a big squeeze. Now we have a much better angle. He can pull that arm in, squeezing the choke in because it compresses the shoulder to the crowd. Oh, he he gets Sheamus escapes a straight on a dog choke. He's looking for the back now. Oh, big suplex attempt there from Kyle Chambers. He's still got more in the tank. Plenty more in the tank. Can you believe it? As we close in on the hour mark, Kyle Chambers fights out of a very difficult position right. and immediately on the counter attack. I was just holding my breath there for a second. That was intense. <laughs> wow. This, uh, this match has definitely had its fair share of dramatic moments. Look at Isaac skating around. They're so oh, sweaty yeah. out there. 
But, you know, it's a, it is super impressive that Kyle still had that burst of energy ready to go. The minute he had an opening, boom, looking at the Doris, going for a takedown. Yeah, that was surprising to me, that he was straight on such a big attack right away. And I felt kind of bad in the last, let's say, 40 minutes or so, because you've been talking so much about Isaac, but really it's because Isaac's been kind of dictating the pacing and yeah. doing the attacking. But when Kyle has his moments, he does make them count. They make yeah. things very interesting. <laughs> Yeah, it was true. It would have been interesting to see what happened if he had gotten to a dominant position, if he was able to jump on the back there. Mm -hmm. But it was a little bit of a weird position right there on the edge of the mat. And so instead of jumping, he opted for like a suplex mat return. They kind of went on their sides. But that ended in a scramble with him on the bottom and open guard, which is what we've been seeing, you know, throughout the match. So here we are now in our, in our uh, same sequence, right? Isaac passing straight into the back here. Back into the same defense here from Kyle. Look at the talk on Kyle Chambers' neck. The way that Isaac is kind of passing that the, the tricep over the side of the head, it's like it's like he's trying to completely twist Chambers' spine. Yeah, man. yeah. And you can see just clouds of sweat spraying off them as they move through these transitions as well. Isaac's ability to remain tight with all the slippage that's going on out there is super impressive to me in these transitions. It is, especially because Isaac is definitely focused on opening up that top arm. I mean, every time he's transitioning here, we hear his teammates yelling, focus on the elbow, focus on the elbow. It's like, you know, it's with someone as dominant as Isaac and as slippery as they are, <laughs> to not be able to open the elbow is, is pretty unique. He seems to, as you, as you, after you point that out, how really insistent on this neck torque, let's call it. Mm. And that, again, if we're playing a game of endurance, this is one way to start killing the motivation, making uh, just Kyle quit, because that's what he has to do at this point, is make Kyle completely give up. I think what we're starting to see is Isaac starting to solve the puzzle now, because what's happening is now he's shifting to that. He's continuing to go for that. When he's cranking the neck that way, he's attacking the far arm. And before he was going on the same side arm and going for the like the regular arm bar from the back, but now he's looking for that cross side arm, which is the same one he ended up on the triangle a couple minutes ago. So I think we're starting to see Isaac, like his gears are turning right. He's starting to solve the puzzle Find a little some bit. Openings. Yeah, he's starting to notice the patterns now that we've seen it maybe eight or nine, ten times. Yeah. <laughs> the same thing. He's like, okay, let's you know now we're making adjustments each time, getting a little closer, a little bit tighter, um, and you know working towards a final finish. Yeah, great point. I feel like Isaac had the same goal, but he hasn't been doing the same thing. He's been working mm -hmm. different routes to, to find this opening, which is essentially a just pointed at Kyle's elbows. He has to solve yeah. the riddle of Kyle Chambers' elbows. Yes. <laughs> you know, as they fight here, uh, this deep into oh, the wait, match, really get under choked in from Michelle oh, now we're here. Under. Oh, and, and we're fighting over. from Chambers. But as we get these tipping, this deep into the match, let's not forget what's at stake here. A $10,000 cash prize, a 10,000 tears bonus for the winner, and a three-match contract on who's number one. That is something worth fighting for. That's a lot of tears. <laughs> we got a lot of tears. But you saw Kyle Chambers' face in the press conference yesterday when he realized he was close to $25,000 in total on the line. That suddenly made it things a lot more real for him. Yeah, he talked a, a lot about not just the money, which of course is fantastic, but the prestige. This is the first time this has happened in jiu-jitsu, first time we've done WNX, and he wants that. That title of who's next champion, absolutely. Mm -hmm. first Isaac ever. Michelle even said, you know, that, that that his personal life right now, that you know, the fact that he's finally conquered his athlete's visa, that he's able to relocate permanently from Australia to the United States, bring his family over. That money's gonna go a long way to establishing himself, his life and his career here as a professional athlete in the United States, where many would say the greatest opportunities lie. Oh, it certainly set him up for his ADCC camp, right? I can do, just focus on that. He's got what, 10 weeks, something, something like that? Kendra, you might know. <laughs> you might be aware of that. We're about to come up on nine weeks. Okay, nine and a half, okay. roughly, yeah, yep, yep. We're about to come up on nine. 
getting closer, baby. Yeah, this is an amount of money that most grapplers in, at this stage have not seen ever for a match win. Many grapplers in general have not seen that for a match win, so this is huge. Yeah, not everybody's Gordon Ryan. Not everybody's making that kind of bank, right? Right. Okay, Isaac's going high now. Will he switch off for that triangle or the arm? He's got the arm bar attack here. Yeah, if he can keep his left knee open to keep the head from Kyle coming up, but now he is able to come up in a better position. But switching off to a figure four position still has the arm. I think Kyle maybe has managed to kind of compromise the position. Yes, he has. Norfolk oh. trying. Isaac was pretty close to getting that there, but got a cut or something. I saw some blood. I don't know where that's coming from. It does look like we need a little medical stoppage right here. Is it a thumb? A thumb. Medic. Yeah, we're going to get our trainer out here, our medic, onto the mat so we can... I don't know what tape in the world is going to stay on these guys with all that sweat on there, but we'll try. Yeah, well, while they patch up Mr. Chambers, Isaac. just a reminder, you can claim your free Tezos Pro Grappling. Who's next? NFT. Scan that, cra uh, stand, scan that code right there and... Go grab your NFT today. It looks like it's in the mouth. Yeah. Uh, or nose, possibly. I'm not sure. Oh, there we go. It's the nose. And this is a convenient moment as well that the athletes are getting a quick water break. Isaac Michelle is over with his corner and. Getting some technical advice from Nicky Ryan there, demonstrating on Damian Anderson. <laughs> the grips necessary to get that finish. Took a swig of water. And uh, Carl Chambers. Oh, it's just. Shouldn't take too long, hopefully, to uh, fix this. Have to say we got a great crowd in the house tonight. <coughs> Maintain a high level of energy. Sold out crowd. That too. Yeah, the crowd's been very spicy. I think their favorite still was Sewer Rat, though. <laughs> he knows how to work them, <laughs> that's for sure. The uh, garbage bin entrance definitely goes on the top five. Good. Uh, it's uh, a forgettable moment. And who's next? Oh, no. All right, we're back at it. Fight. Clock is running, and the match will continue. Kyle looking fresh, skipping around out there. Hey, you know, that little break right there has given both of them an opportunity. Oh, Isaac looking at a nice foot sweep there. Oh, wow, the crowd did not like the fact that Kyle Chambers <laughs> sat to guard, but he's not coming up. Kyle Chambers, Isaac oh, was like, you Kyle know, in a triangle, maybe. Isaac, Isaac kind of gave though. Kyle the opportunity to stand back up, but Kyle was like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> I don't want to wrestle. Wait a minute. Isaac, right back to where we left off here. I think you put it best, Kendall. Isaac has definitely found a route that he seems to like. He's looking for the arm. How can you find it? And what is Kyle ultimately hoping to do? <laughs> Yeah. That is the question, because you can stay alive for as long as you want, but you will not win that way. There's got to be some offense. So we have to think, what is Kyle look, hoping to have happen? What's he looking for? I know we're almost at an hour here, 58 and a half minutes. Isaac's still pretty quick on that back attack. He hasn't lost a step yet. Those of you guys at home just know we are all still eagerly waiting for Gordon versus Pedro Mourinho, so make sure you guys don't go anywhere. Yeah, still got the main event to come. Heavyweight title match between Gordon, Ryan, and Pedro Mourinho. That'll be up after this match. Who knows when? <laughs> we can't tell you a time, but we can tell you an order. Yeah, you can hear Gio Martinez saying to Kyle Chambers, don't get lazy and keep fighting the hands because it is it is in this 
in these deep moments of the match, you need those very basic, those very simple reminders. Because we talked about the focus, we talked about the the mental fortitude required to compete late in these matches, and sometimes it is that brain, it is that basic stuff you just need the the basic instructions. Oh, that arm is nearly underneath the chin there. That's nearly there. Isaac, we're de desperate to get this finish here now with the closest position we've seen yet. Man, Kyle's defense is A1 right now. We officially passed the one hour mark. 60 minutes and 15 seconds into this match. What was their longest on uh, on who's next? Not the three hour match, but the longest of these guys was an hour and a half. Is Kyle that right? an hour and a half. Yeah, he, he went over an hour and a half against yeah. Tackett. Yeah. Wow. But they were all in the room for that three hour match, which may give them the confidence to know that it is possible, right? right? right. They don't have that, can anyone do that kind of thought lingering? They've seen right. it with their own eyes. So have we, and hopefully just the one time, but you never know. We don't need to see the <laughs> match, that's for sure. I've seen the one, that's, uh, that's fine. get to really see, I mean, of course it all revolves around that elbow, but Isaac, <laughs> Isaac looked for a head and arm choke or... I think there was one look at a head and arm and he almost had it locked up and then lost the, the arm and the head isolation that he was looking for due to Kyle's elbow to rib cage obsession and dominance here <laughs> that we've been seeing. But the head and arm, I think he's looking for that and then the top side arm control. Maintaining connection throughout that entire sequence right there, moving from side to side, eyes on Michelle, and shoulder pressure. It's a little bit different here in the front side turtle. See a, a nice bite with the right arm of Isaac is kind of deep through, but Kyle has a good grip of it, I think, with both hands on the wrist. Now transitioning to the back. And that turtle position, you really always have two choices. You can attack the neck, you can attack the guillotines there, anacondas, or you can spin behind and look to take the back. It's interesting to think about with the perspective of the B team corner right now. It's like, what? is the answer <laughs> you know yeah. usually you're coaching somebody through dominating the position to get to a submission but he's been dominating for 63 minutes at this point so it's like what are we going to change what are we going to shift after over an hour of rolling with the same person to make a slight change because at the high level these submissions come from slight openings from you know millisecond kind of transitions Oh, here we see the arm. Speaking another of the arm transition, arm. another arm lock attempt oh, there. Lost but it. Man, yeah. his transitions are to the back are just so smooth though. Jeez. Kyle's defense though for the for the rear naked choke. I mean, he had his hand ready to go. It just completely blocked the arm coming in around the neck. Now Isaac, you know, could have snatched that in the transition against anybody else, but Kyle was like, no. He doesn't even have to do the late submission defense. Oh, and here's the closest we've seen to Kyle being fully flattened out. But Kyle's got incredible uh, control over his hips, basically, and the willingness to fight that. Now we see some separation of the arm over the head. Could potentially be an arm lock on that side again, or we could see an arm triangle if Kyle turns back to his back. Here's Corner yelling to go for the arm again. The fact that we're seeing Isaac workshop techniques in real time, basically, is also kind of insane. It's fascinating. Yeah. It really is. 
Yeah, we're hearing really slight uh, directional adjustments from Damien and the rest of the people in the A team corner. You wanna wanna know something? Uh, this is just an observation based on this last hour plus of fighting as well, is that Kyle Chambers has not had one second where he has been in a position of dominance, a position, right. a control position. I would say he's the, had his the moments closest of, that back clinch, right? He yeah, like he had his moment. moments of like, you know, uh, brief submission attacks in transitions, but he's never passed a guard. He's never secured back control. He's never had a pin. Whereas Isaac Michel has spent the majority of this match in an active controlling position. Kyle doesn't look like he cares either. <laughs> like, noti 100%. notably, look at his face. He's just like, yeah, I'm just, just training, just hanging out. He, it still looks very mobile, right? He hasn't look, doesn't look discouraged. Still moving well, just not very offensively. Right. But doing just enough. You know, and Isaac may, as you pointed out, Kendall, start to feel discouraged eventually. I mean. He's done a great job of, of maintaining a pace throughout. Oh, Kyle, oh rubber, guard, rubber guard, rubber guard sequence. Look at this. Chambers using that flexibility and going high. It's a really solid grip there, the, it's the rubber good. guard clinch. But by just burying his head down and driving forward, Shell is able to break that clinch control. Also, there was key that Isaac stepped over with that left leg, didn't allow Kyle to go high with the full guard. That could have uh, looked a little bit different if he hadn't done that. Nice grip. Again, another theme from this match. I think it's all, the major way he's been able to separate the elbow from the top, the top elbow from the body, right? So he continues to go back to it. So in analyzing this match for almost 70 minutes, we're seeing a lot of patterns start to develop. So now the pattern has shifted. So go now we've seen the pattern develop into that top side arm, into a turtle slash front headlock, into a guard recovery. This is totally different than the first Bye. 15 to 20 minutes of this match. So it's like Isaac is developing an understanding of Kyle's game. He's kind of, his wheels are turning, he's solving the puzzle, he shifts a little bit, but every time he shifts, Kyle is keeping up and developing a new defense to Isaac's new adjustment, right? So we're seeing that over and over. What a match study. Yeah. <laughs> it's intense. Oh, Kyle briefly had a nice look at the legs, never really secured a position, but Isaac's feeling very comfortable, obviously, standing passing here, but Kyle kind of looking to get underneath the legs for the first time with any kind of aggression right now. First time in a while, let's say. But forced to concede position here. Staying open. Oh, wow. Double knee ride. Double knee ride. That's mean. Oh, stepping on the... This is just mean. And like we said, this is what he needed to do uh, to beat Adam Bradley. He needed to get mean. And I feel like there's just a little more edge. There's a little edge. There's a little bit more... Uh, Venom in uh, uh, Isaac Michelle's attacks right now. Yeah, I think if he keeps turning it up the way he's doing and he keeps that pace, he can really get on a roll that's going to lead to a sub. Now, a head arm stroke may present itself here, right? Look at a little half Nelson. We'd he, love to see it. <laughs> torquing on the shoulder, but I don't know. I feel like I'd be adjusting, maybe start looking at the choke. Yeah, absolutely. How about him? Go! Oh, now he's trying to control the arm there. Is Isaac uh, with, with that hook over the top. First time he's been able to do that, in my, if I can recall correctly here. Now he's starting to get that right arm underneath the chin. Does Kyle have the strength and dexterity to free that arm? He needs to, or this could turn south for him. Watch your butterfly hook inside your back. All the way out. And look at Isaac supporting that his own leg with his arm instead of hunting for the choke. He really wants to maintain control over that arm. Okay, he switches it up again. Peeling up the face. 
over the nose, almost fingers in the nose there. Ah, oh, he lost control over the arm. Yeah, I think that is going to be a really nice opportunity if Isaac can get to a straight check of position or any position where the arm is controlled by the legs, then he can start to avoid that like hand on cheek, double hand on cheek, elbow tight defense. Mm -hmm. Here, Gio yelling from his corner. Oh. Kyle, it's the main event. Let's go. It's the main event. Now's the time. 70 minutes. 7 0. Oh, there we go. This could possibly be the end of the match right here. The rear naked choke is on. Kyle Chambers only has one hand on that forearm. If we can flip the angle, we can see the hand around the neck. We can't quite see. There it is. There's a look at it. Oh! He escapes one more time. How I think I even survive. saw a smile. I swear to God, Kyle just smiled. <laughs> <laughs> that, I think, was the, the deepest submission attack that we've seen in this match so far. Everybody was excited for the potential finish there. Wow, wow. Turn, turn, turn. Turn, Inch by inch, though. Inch by inch, we're seeing this change a little bit more. Maybe Isaac's going to drop off. Never mind. One more time, he's in mount. Oh, this match really has gone a very long time, but uh, oh, this is looking good again. Yeah, okay. It, almost a short choke attempt there. I just, I, he's having, no way that Chambers puts his hands on his own face, you know. It's uh, I was having face. a little more luck though, getting underneath the chin. For a while, he wasn't penetrating it anyway. Here we can see Paige Mourinho waiting anxiously backstage there. Yeah, a moment, uh, you know, to, for, for Pedro Mourinho, it must be really tough as an athlete to uh, to prepare for a match, you know, to warm up appropriately when there's really no idea of how long it could possibly be until that match ends. It's, you know, when there's a clock counting down, no problem, but this one's counting up and doesn't look close to ending just yet. Especially with the anticipation of the submissions as there are like some submissions that start to get locked on because then as a competitor, you're like, okay, cool, now we're in the zone. In. Yeah, <laughs> now you're going, now you're moving, you're oh, jumping around. No, I don't. Yeah, I have yeah. to go, <laughs> just go relax again. Honestly, it's really, it's it, it, to be, you know, to be transparent, it's very tough on the nervous system because right. it's not like you're warming up to train. I mean, your mm. adrenaline and the way that uh, <laughs> your heart rate is going through the roof, like depending on the competitor, of course, but it's really taxing on the nervous system to be getting ready every five minutes to fight. And then, you know, an hour and 15 minutes later, you're still ready, <laughs> you're still waiting. Especially standing, you know, like on the legs for that long, it's, uh, it's a lot. It's kind of an interesting thing to think about with Gordon and Pedro in particular, because Gordon typically- Oh, look at oh, Isaac jumping on a leg here. here. Oh, we're gonna roll out of bounds. Time, 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 time. The leg entanglement opens right on the edge of the mat, so that's a neutral restart in the center. Go, 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 go. 
Bye. Yeah, this is truly a marathon match. Look at that. Kyle spanned through very quickly and is hunting for an ankle here. He still has the knee line. Almost. Textbook defense there by Isaac Michelle and escaping a very dangerous position and immediately counterattacking. Nice to see that Kyle still has some, some activity though. I mean, well, like I said earlier, maybe maybe 30 minutes ago, when Kyle, when Kyle goes for something, he's fully committed and has had some great looks. Quality over quantity in Kyle's case tonight. Oh, yeah. Another mounted series of attacks here where now he's starting to pin the bottom arm, maybe in hopes of separating the top arm out. As we were saying about the guys in the back, uh, Pedro and Gordon, it's interesting to note that Gordon's pre-match style is very, very relaxed and very chill. He doesn't do a whole lot of like running around and we're actually gonna take a look at him. I mean, just like I just said, he's just chilling, hanging there he out. Is. There's the king. He's signing it up, right? And so as a contrast, you know, Pedro. There's a big smile on his face as well, considering somebody who's, you know, <laughs> moments away from one of the most significant matches of the year. A heavyweight title bout against Pedro Mourinho. Looking supremely confident as yeah. you would expect from the King. Yeah, just, it's dark back there. I look like we're about to take a nap. <laughs> yeah, Gordon, his pre-match style is very chill. Pedro, on the other hand, gets very hyped up, gets very psyched. You know, he's like super, super intense. So that might be a little bit hard to deal with when you're waiting so long compared to Gordon's style where he's, you know, just hanging out, relaxing his usual. Either way, though, the anticipation is going to be there. Now we see another attempt of this short choke variation, but the hands of Kyle being inside make it really tough for that to get tight, yeah. even over the face. It's Kyle just can't get a clean look at the rear naked choke, right? Kyle's so good at putting his hands inside the choke and just taking that pressure off. And he's not even like a... It's not a fail-safe escape by any means. You know, there's, no, there's a kind of defense that can easily be overcome, but that goes to show how good his back defense is. Now we're getting a little more aggression oh, here from yeah. Isaac. Yep, this is what's going to be necessary with a defense like this. You're going to have to. Yeah. See him kind of grabbing the side of the face and pulling it open. It is interesting that it, it doesn't seem that Isaac is really um, like hell bent on going to a straight jacket or trapping the arm because that would be my thought on Kyle's back with this right. kind of defense. So you would think he would be working like some very particular grips to push the arm down to the belly, bring his heel up and start to lock a straight jacket. You know, that's a good point. He hasn't tried that once. But we've been here for an hour and 17 minutes and he hasn't we, even, we saw one look saw at one it, look, right? Yeah. And it was actually the closest yeah. he had gotten. Right. Um, Maybe he just has Oh, wait. Oh, okay. It says the hands in again. Every time the rear naked choke from here can look so close, even mat side, but then you see there's just the, those fingers kind of you know, inside the rear naked choke. And, and there is a bit of a strength advantage here too. It can be really hard to finish somebody who, what was it, 20 pounds that he has? 10, I think. Actually, yeah, it's only oh, is it only 10? Yeah, it's only 10. Kyle looks so much bigger. He does. He's, he's like a five in. inch advantage. Right. He's yeah. very, very tall, but he was weighed in at 198, whereas Michelle was 188. Okay. So. okay. Yeah, so yeah, then, right. yeah, I was going to say with a strength advantage, it can make finishing very difficult and it can make defending quite easier. But I, I'm, you know, I'm, just, I'm at a loss because there's not even that big of a, of a size advantage. All the way to half guard. Don't stop to half guard. 
Do you think they're still thinking about $25,000 or is this just a, <laughs> is this just a personal grudge match now? You will not take this from me. I think it's pride at I this think point. There's pr I will fight you till next year <laughs> if that's what it takes, but you will not win. I know. What happens if we go till 3 in the morning here? Is there a rule about this? Let me ask the question that everyone's wondering. <laughs> nice work there from Carl Chambers. Again, Kyle's looking pretty fluid. Both these guys look incredible, to be honest, for 70, what, nine minutes? Amazing their conditioning has held up this long, really. I mean, if you think about it, the majority of people will train for at least an hour and a half in the gym, right? An hour, hour and a half, no problem. You'll train from, you yeah, know, say, two, 6 till 7.30, but two not minute break. continuously, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Give me a water break. <laughs> Isaac looking real quick at the back, changing tactics here. Yeah, this is a different look for Kyle. You see that waist control with the foot inside, but it is a little bit precarious because it can be very hard for him to come up or kind of insert those hooks at all from the back because um, he's flat on his back right now. His right leg is elevated. There it is. <laughs> the, the first, the first the one. The first boo that we've heard tonight. Only a, a soul, a soul lonely Just boo. Just the one guy, yeah. You know, we've had an amazing crowd in here tonight. Yes, like, I super say it's been a great enthusiastic. Yeah. The energy's been great. They've been paying close attention to all of the jujitsu that's taking place. You know, they know it's a very educated crowd as well. I think that points to Austin being mm. such a, a hub for jujitsu now. I mean, it came pretty much about around about this time last year with the, the arrival of the B team and new wave to Austin, Texas. Of course, Shanji Hibero had set up shop uh, not long before that. And Austin already had a pretty thriving scene, uh, grappling scene of its own before then. So it was a well-established community, but they've really come out in force to support the athletes here at the Who's Next finale. And they really appreciate the jujitsu on display because they know when a submission is imminent, when an attack is on, they see it themselves. And I think that's great. Me in the back of the neck. That's something. You know, I might too at this point. <laughs> I might, you might have to. Got to get some opening somehow, you know? Time. Now we see his right arm starting to come position. through. We're going to reset. Same position. Fight! That was nice of Isaac to first start with his knee on the mat and then gently <laughs> go back to the neck, back of the head. Sportsman like, very polite. Isaac takes a moment to appraise the situation here. Wow, he actually just let off the pressure yeah. to see if Kyle would move. Like, he's doing it again. Look, he's actually just giving up. And, and Kyle's not moving. He's not taking the bait. He wants Kyle to open up. That is a little bit, let's call it what it is, the danger of a no time limit match when mm. one player decides offense is no longer the option. Uh, every, I mean, we, surprise it really makes it a bit, uh, attacks difficult <laughs> revelation i know at, at a third minute here but you have to wonder if isaac may bait uh kyle with a giving up position you know maybe he'll go to his back to try something different just to get a new look to get kyle to engage a bit more 
because Kyle's clearly good at, at making it through. Guillotine style arm triangle choke. Referred to as a seated arm triangle. Oh, is that under? Oh, this could be it. This could be the rear naked choke that ends the match. Chambers has his right hand inside. Why does he look so relaxed? I don't think, I don't think it's going to be good. I think Kyle's okay. Why does he look he's, so good? Kyle puts his hand in deeper. This is the most ridiculous Runica joke defense. This has happened twice now. This happened once like 15 minutes ago or something. But it's still on. Nah, Kyle's fine. I wow. I don't think Kyle, he's impervious. Dude, this man has like a jaw of steel. How are his fingers in again? We need to see the hands to see what's really happening here. The angle doesn't quite show us the choke from this view. It's a little better here, yeah. But I just can't believe how resilient Kyle Chambers has been in the face of all of these attacks. Remarkable. Looking a little more insistent now as Isaac. Drops off again. The arm lock may be the way at this point, but Isaac is now getting tired, and Kyle turns up the pace here. First real attempt at a guard pass we've seen from Kyle Chambers as well. Putting some forward pressure on. Oh, triangle here. Triangle straight arm lock. Reverse arm lock. Obviously, Isaac shaking his head yes. He's going to get the finish here. Kyle Chambers is he escapes once again. You got to think, Isaac Michelle, what is going through his head right now? He's probably thinking, I have thrown everything in my arsenal at this man, and I cannot submit him. Kyle Chambers, his defense, his survival, so good. 
Wind the back tape. And then down there come forward. You go back to the top. Back to the top passing. Yes. And an and this is a truly gritty display here from the man on top, Carl Chambers. The black belt from 10th Planet. The crowd see it. They recognize the threat here. They see the arm lock, they see the Kimura attack. Lachlan Jars calls this, I believe, the Choi Bar. Arm lock set up by throwing this leg up and over the top. But Chambers is hit, man. He just sees every submission attack coming. Very calmly roll. Find a way out over and over again. As soon as this match is over, I'm going to walk up to Gio and ask him who can submit this man yeah. in training. When is the last time he was submitted? Like, I need to know. It's ridiculous. I'm, yeah. Wow. This is the first time I've seen a double guard pull. I wonder if Isaac's gonna switch to the legs now, because he knows he can come up and pass. So now it looks like he may be interested in going into the leg entanglements, which we know he wasn't scared of because he, if you remember, an hour and a half ago, he went into single leg X. <laughs> in the very if your memory stretches back to the distant times of an hour and a half ago. <laughs> You may remember. I in think the you are days. straining my abilities at this point, Ken. Yeah, I'm not gonna yeah. lie. He <laughs> went into single leg X willingly. Yes. So we know he's not afraid of going into the legs. He just didn't see it as his number one path. But now we're back into a leg drag. No, maybe not. Maybe it's hard to say. I mean, if you were Isaac, what would you be thinking, Chase? Where would you be wanting to go from here? Would you keep the same? positions or would you shift I mean I'm he's tried a bit of everything always going <laughs> eventually for the back yeah the uh, like we said minutes ago hours ago it's a, the ability to, to, to defeat Kyle's elbow control has been the key to this match and Kyle is I gotta say we, we were talking about mental warfare earlier Kyle is very mentally tough I mean he's clearly without right without a doubt maybe the understatement of the evening, but he's content to do this. I think he's prepared to do it for as long as, I mean, at this point, it's very clear he's prepared to do as long as it takes. Well, but what is that? But he's not gonna, he's not gonna give up. You know, no. like, why would he submit? If he has got a way out, if he's got the ability to escape, he wouldn't just quit. Nobody's gonna quit in this match. All right, back, body triangle. Oh, a little Mexican wave, the crowd uh, entertaining themselves now, you can see. I'm glad to see that their, their spirits are still high. They're still enjoying <laughs> the action here. And there's been plenty of it. I mean, with, oh, a lot of support for Isaac Michelle here. Let's go, Isaac! 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 So a partisan crowd here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> that tells us who's number one, who's next finale. A lot of support for Isaac Michelle, the Australian transplanted here to Austin, Texas, representing the B team. And I definitely think that's raised the spirits in the room. I wonder if it's even possible to raise the spirits of these competitors this deep into a long and grueling match such as this. And again, we've seen the same transitions and the same patterns over and over and over here from Isaac Michelle. But I will say that it's a really cool thing to see the way that his mind works as he changes his patterns ever so slightly every single time so that he's getting a little bit closer. But then at the same time, like we said before, 
and we've been saying for an hour and 33 minutes, <laughs> uh, Kyle is adjusting his defense as well, right? So he's getting closer to finishes, but Kyle's I feel like there's been a degradation. Again. You know, maybe at the 45 minute mark we saw Isaac make some great adjustments, 60 minute mark, but last 20, I think fatigue is obviously a factor. Yes. Slippage a factor. It's honestly really impressive the way that Isaac's been able to stay in dominant control for these long periods of time as fatigue sets in, because a lot of times once you start to get fatigued, things are a little bit less tight. Oh he no, might, he stayed sharp throughout. But he stayed yeah. so sharp. Like, And man, I want to think back to the pre-show where Kyle and everyone was talking about the jet lag. Like, we were all imagining that he was going to want to finish the match early because of the jet lag. This man has been going nonstop for an hour and 34 minutes and hasn't yeah. slowed down. Yeah. He just flew here from it Australia a day and a half ago. Yeah. It's, it's pretty nuts. <laughs> Dealing with all the stress of having to clear various immigration hurdles, yes. COVID tests, missed flights, you name it. And all that stress, and he still, still managed to stay sharp this long in a match this tough it speaks volumes There's another drop off for the armbar there. Oh, he's switching it to that triangle again. Now this is, again, a solid position. And you can see Kyle Chambers is taking some deep breaths in this position. There's going to be a lot of pressure right here. If, if Michelle can stretch this position out, this is 100% a legitimate finishing hold. He's got to try and break that grip. He's got to try and bring that elbow, the trapped elbow, closer to him. So we saw this position very, very similar earlier in the match, but almost exactly the same. And he again tried to attack this outside arm. But Kyle's so uh, acrobatic. He flipped out and somehow rotated his shoulder through, stepped over the body. Again, this is exactly what we saw earlier. Isaac reached through to the far arm, tried to pull it tighter to get that compression. And again, Kyle coming up to the top. Oh, toe holds, toe holds. From one submission attack to another. Oh, but he's out again. You know, this is actually, I've just seen that the B team have had their second round of snacks delivered. I'm they've jealous. Got, they've, got, they've got somebody <laughs> running back and forth, uh, bringing them all manner of delicious looking snacks. Are you getting hungry, Hal? I'm jealous. Still trying to find a way out is Kyle Chambers, but he's not even able to really recover anything resembling a, a good guard at the moment. Oh no, triangle, look at this! Oh, oh triangle no. armbar! He 
Smithies is on. Kyle Chambers has got the arm locked out and locked on triangle. Oh my God. We're in the 98th minute and Kyle Chambers is very close to submitting Isaac oh Michelle God. here. God. His arm is completely oh extended. The triangle choke is on. Kyle. Oh, he's almost out. Oh. <laughs> wow. Oh, oh Isaac oh Michelle man. manages to find his way out on an extremely tight triangled arm bar. And he's right back on the attack onto the neck once again. <laughs> out of nowhere, Kyle Chambers threw out that submission, and that was by far his best attack in this entire match. That was the most dominant attack as far as submissions goes in the entire match from either competitor. Absolutely. So what's going to happen now? We've hit the 99-minute match mark, and we're actually going to call a halt to this match because we need to get the Gordon Ryan and Pedro Moringa match going. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna, uh, we're gonna pass this off to a, a mat backstage, keep it running, and we are going to, uh, to let it continue backstage. We're gonna clean the mats, get Gordon out of here. So we'll toss it over to our MC, Brian Hansen, for a uh, quick announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, after 99 minutes of competition, we are unable to reach a conclusion in this no time limit match. Hold up. We are going to pause this match for safety issues, allow them to rehydrate and move this bout to the back match. And bring out our main event, Gordon Ryan versus Pedro Mourinho. Let's go, guys. Let's go, Isaac. Let's go, Isaac.
minutes in. Hand dog fight, elbows tight. Watch the hips, though. Watch the hips. Watch the guillotine again. You can't get leaky over here, Kyle. Keep making him work hard. Extend that defense. Can you do it with your feet? Your foot work. Like a hand. Punch right hand. Right arm across. Yeah. Bring your right ear to the Get that butterfly up. Push that butterfly up. Punch the right arm through as you make the right Make this the triangle weak when you do that. Keep going up. Nice, nice. Now switch. Respect that choke. Keep fighting. Hey, you, did, you did good when you trapped an arm. Straight here. Why is that? Triangle. Why you left switch back? And you're going back and forth. Every time he kicks that leg over, yeah, you block sure it. Make sure your right knee's up by the shoulder if you want to transfer. Get that other hook out off of you to the front. Start 
get away and start getting back into your guard car. Even though you feel safe here, I still want to see more offensive. Let's go. Watch that shoulder in the tight right now. He's climbing high with that right leg. Maybe kick the leg over and go back to the mouth, attack from there. towards this side. Bring it back towards the right side if you can. You just strangle to bring it to the right side. Get there, don't get that triangle. Get there, if you go two strangles. Get your leg when he opens up, put that leg in the half guard and you turn into it. You gotta have one leg in between your legs to turn into the half guard that you were earlier. Yes. yes. Start, easy. start opening up. Yeah, yeah. yeah, there you go. Start working that leg behind him. Turn to your right. It's easier when you get on the right than you pin that leg down. All right, now start opening up. There you go. Keep that there. That's annoying. Right there. There it is. Triangles here. Get out all the way out. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, wow. Nice. 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 Yes. Nice. 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 Come on, Kyle. Counter, Kyle. Go down, guys. Let's go. Make it work. Every kick you have. Right. Right hand. Yes. So many attacks. Use so all your attacks. Let's chain things together. We go one. Use all your attacks. Oh, we're getting, let's get our guard going. Let's go. Chain the subs together. Don't go down these fights right away. Uh, keep your Bella Hebo or any Bella Hebo. Half battle too. Break those grips. Stay in front if you have to. Just watch the back there. You're actually trying to push your knees down. Keep bending your knees under the arm. On your grips, Kyle. You play not tight grips so you're not getting any grips. Right here with the butterfly. 
Do that quarter to guard. Back to quarter guard. Think about getting the elbows away from his head. Left elbow under his. If you work in the back of cave like you did earlier. Trap his leg when you try and you turn to your side. Get, bit, get, get his chin like flattened this. out. Get his elbows over his head. Stay on top. If you fall down, you're going to watch the back of uh, the show. Try to get head position. Think about your footwork now. <laughs> Go footwork right away. Pick that foot down. Like what you did earlier, that hurt him. That's still mount, maybe. Step on the ankle, hip into it. I think, I think you should just stay on top. Either mount or belly down on the back. Because don't be underneath him anymore. Yeah, just to try to fatigue him up like from top position. Like yeah. Mount, side control. You got to try to fatigue him. Yeah, yeah. 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 Use a false strip you more. Don't, don't grab it to your left thumb. Yeah, yeah. And roll your wrist forward. Roll your wrist forward. Oh, cross grips are there again. Cross grips, yeah. Trap arms here. All right, you can do, do the Mason Fowler. Mason Fowler. Trap arms on top. There you go. Get, get your head out. All the way out, pal. Cross strips are arms good. Trap you down. Trap you down. You can get your head on the mat. Your body trying to stop you from turning. Yeah. Right legs come over now. Right legs come over now. Keep that hand there. Keep that. the right arm through to strangle. Turn. If you can go two arms over the top, two strangle arms. No easy submission. Make it work for everything. Let's go. Turn the grip. He's resting on you so you can keep it. Try to make it work a little bit. You're gonna be, you're gonna have your back to bring on it. Yes. Hands. Defense. Hard defense. Let's go. 
attack. Two stranglehands. I think two stranglehands. He's not going for anything out there. You're going to make a choke. You got respect it.
all four quarters. All four. Yep. It's okay. Let's just end it here. Then. Woo! Sure. Yes. Yeah. Yeah.